Morning, boys. Good morning. Good evening. Good? How's everyone doing? All good, yeah. man. All, yeah, all good. How you doing? All good, man. Had a holiday last weekend. I'd like How to say I'm recharged, but it was kind of heavy. So I felt like I've been slow this week. <laughs> but no, it was yeah. good. It was sick. Yeah, how, how was it? Because I did see the pictures at the beach club. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was good, man. <laughs> it was good. It's been a while since I've had a party trip like that. So I don't mm-hmm. usually drink that much. But it was sick, man. It was just good to, to link up with some guys that I hadn't seen for a while. And we were only there for two nights. So it was a short trip. Barcelona's sick, too. It's one of those places that just has everything you need. Like, the, the city itself is really nice. Like, clean yeah. city. Obviously, good weather. And then the beach is, like, right in the city as well. So you can just, like walk 10 minutes out and you're at the beach. So mm. it's literally got everything you need. Then there's loads of cool bars, clubs if you need them. Like literally just has everything. So I'd definitely yeah. go back to Barca again. I've been a couple of times before, but a while back. But mm. I'm going to go again for sure. Yeah, mm. I love Barcelona as well. To be honest, before here, I really wanted to move to Barcelona. Mm. I think it's such a mm. vibey city. Yeah, because it's, it's such a big city as well. Like it... It, it looks like it could be a London, but it's not that hectic. Like everyone yeah. around there is, they just don't look stressed. You know, you walk around in London, everyone's just rushing around trying to get everywhere. Over there, it just seems a bit calmer. Yeah, for sure. Yes, yeah, a vibe. Definitely. Mm. Yeah. What made you um, go to Thailand then instead of Barca? Like what was the thing that made Purely you think, just right, bureaucracy. yeah. Going to mm. going to Spain because we're outside the EU now. It's not as simple as like me just turning up and living there. I have to oh, yeah. get a a visa and then turn that into a residence. And to be honest, I've been looking into it because it's something that I still want to do eventually. Yeah. Like I definitely see myself in Spain long term. But yeah, you yeah, have you can to speak get... some Spanish as well, can't you? Yeah, but yeah, the the visa you have to qualify for it. It's quite of a lot. Quite a lot of paperwork. I can't even lie to you. It's a lot. Really? Yeah. And then Spanish tax was another thing that you have to sort out as well. Because if you live there for more than six months, you have to pay Spanish tax. So that's mm. another thing Is that you have to high? worry about. A lot higher than the UK. Really? Higher than the UK? Yeah, it can go up. It's a sliding scale, but it goes up to like 50% quite quickly. Oof. Damn. That could put me on, off. On the income tax. I was thinking on, I could live in Spain. Easy. On, on the business tax... It's not that bad, but the the income tax, yeah. Right. But there's a oh man, I've been going down like mad rabbit holes on this shit. So <laughs> I saw there's like some, um, they created a, a law around David Beckham when he came to play for Real Madrid. So the taxes <laughs> would be favorable for athletes who are looking to come over. But now that's applied to entrepreneurs as well. So there's a, there's like a thing you can do to lower your taxes as a foreigner who comes to Spain. Do you change that whole law? Just for Beckham. Yeah, bro. <laughs> that's crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> that's man. power. It's crazy, man. Yeah, that's yeah, how you know you're at power. another level. You got your own tax law. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't looked into it, but when I was there, I was thinking I could easily live here. Yeah, man. Like, and it's nice because it's not so day. far from England. You can just do yeah, a quick exactly. two hour, three hour to come home. Yeah, it's easy. And that airport is no hassle. You know, like in English airports, you get there and it's like, all bags are getting searched. It's chaos. Like the queues are massive. Got to mm. Barcelona and it's just like when I was coming back home, just walk straight through security. It's just a breeze. Mm. No stress. Yeah, man. I might have to do a summer trip or something now. You get me. Get me warmed <laughs> up. Get me gas. Get yeah, I'm, I'm going to go again. I was meant to go with my other boy and he's going separately to me now in August and I'm jealous that he's going. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I could have spent a long time there. Easy. Maybe that's where we should do the next producer link up. Mm. Yeah, you're right, actually. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Yeah, that could we be could just get like a sick place in the city and then head to the beach after. Yeah. Do a pool party. Do a producer volleyball match. <laughs> 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 yeah, on the beach. On the, on the beach, yeah, there's yeah. people... There's loads of people trying to sell you stuff, like whether it's fresh mojitos or sunglasses or whatever it is. But then they they have people walking around, like these women offering massages, just like normal massages, obviously. Um, <laughs> and it's only like 10 euros for like a 15 minute massage. So on that last day when 
we didn't have anything to do because the flight was late at night. I was just chilling on the beach all day. So whenever someone walked past and they're like, massage, I was like, yeah, fuck it, 10 euros. I had six <laughs> in a row. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. Six massages. But I didn't think that, obviously, I had sun cream on, but then when they're rubbing oil on your back, it's probably just taking away the sun cream and then you've just got oil on your back, so you're cooking up. So my Oof. back got burnt like mad. I was just oh, basically man. baking in the sun. But it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, oh, that's jokes. I think we need to do another rematch, another Wembley's rematch. Oh yeah, oh, bro. I ain't got it. I ain't got the card. <laughs> we got yet. into the. It was you two in the final, wasn't it? No, no we it wasn't even the, the final. Remember, we, we were just the last. We were just the last two left. It felt like oh, a final. Yeah, the last two. Yeah, it definitely felt yeah. like a final, but it was us in the bottom. Was it us three yeah. at the end? And then yeah, yeah. I got. I can't. What then you went. You got it like. Oh yeah, yeah. And then it was just the mean ocean That's were going right. for like 15 minutes after that. <laughs> Went on forever. Man. Cause yeah. Lona, Lona just- That one there was dodgy, man. There was like- it, Yeah, the walls and everything. There's like stuff sticking out the grass that you didn't want yeah. to kick. Yeah, like rocks and stuff. I'm up for round two though. But yeah, I don't know if my cardio will take me there either. So I have to get back on the treadmill. <laughs> I'm gonna train. If we, if we book another trip, it's gonna be- um. Switch up my whole training plan just to kind of going to be preparing, doing sprints and stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm going to bring fucking, you know, the little like, um, the bibs that you wear at training. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to bring some of those, cones, some cones, bibs, football boots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The whole, the whole lot. Put some money on the table. <laughs> That'll make it oh, interesting. Funny. People be two foot in each other. Yeah. <laughs> where, where, um, I was staying. Um, in Barca, I can't remember what the area was called, but there was this rooftop bar nearby. And when we were on there, like opposite the bar, there was a rooftop five a side that looked sick. Oh, it looked kind looks... of quiet, but I was thinking, oh man, imagine if we did that, just rented the rooftop five a side, had yeah. a game there, and then oh, went to fine. the beach after. Mm. That'd be perfect. That'd be insane. Do you know what would be sick if the producer community got big enough to where we could do, you know, how side men. And oh yeah, Beta Squad and all them stuff. They do football matches in in stadiums yeah. like Stamford Bridge and Old Trafford and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to yeah, play yeah, football yeah. in a stadium just to see how that it would feels. Be crazy. How many yeah, viewers do they epic. get? Or how many what, tickets in, do they sell on those charity matches? Yeah, because I haven't actually watched them. I've seen clips on Instagram and stuff, but mm -hmm. I'm guessing they have people there live, right? It's not just a stream. Yeah, they they have a live yeah. crowd. I think they sell tickets. Do you know how many they sell? I'm not too sure, but I don't think it's little. I doubt right. they sell out a whole 80,000 stadium, but I'm sure they probably yeah. do well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You'd imagine so. They have some big names there. Speed's played there, hasn't he? Yeah. Drewski. Yeah. They've brought over Mr. Chunks. Beast as well. Mm. Mr. Beast, yeah. Between that, yeah. all of them and their reach, I'm sure they probably sell quite a lot. Yeah. Is that the same one? Because sometimes like rappers go on, don't they? Like I know Meeks has been on there, and like okay. a few others. But I don't know if it was the same, if it was the same type of match or if that was something else. To be honest, those kind of matches have been getting popular. I see yeah. because it used to be just side men, but now you see loads of different. Oh, uh, Potter did it, didn't he? Actually, um, Potter and M Huncho. Oh, as, really? Like a bit of promo for their album launch. Thought that was pretty sick. It was like a good way yeah. to market the album. Mm. Yeah, that's sick. So it was like um, Potter Paper was the manager of one team. M. Huncho was the manager of one team. So they picked their players and mm. then they did a whole campaign around it for the album launch. Quite a unique yeah, way. That's yeah, that's quite fun. Yeah. yeah. I'll have to do it for the bundle. <laughs> back producers <laughs> yeah. versus house producers or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that'd be fire, man. That'd be so sick. <laughs> yeah. What do you think people would rather watch us do? Have a football match or boxing? I think boxing, actually. Boxing, probably. I say that. People boxing, always like yeah. to see people fight, don't they? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I feel like boxing is one of those sports anybody can watch and be entertained. Whereas yeah. if you don't like football and you watch football, it's probably quite tedious. Mm. Yeah, if like Americans, they're not as bothered. Yeah. So yeah. we might limit the audience. But for some reason, there's just an animal instinct in us that wants to watch yeah, punch each other. <laughs> what it is just universal. Like, Since you're a kid, like a watching a fight on a playground, it's like, yeah, yeah. 
Would you even consider it, to be honest, though? Boxing? Yeah. I consider it. Because when I, I've been to, like, I've been to a couple of boxing matches and I've been to some low-key ones where it's just, like, white-collar boxing and charity matches. And I always think it would be good to just tick it off the list to say I've done it. But also, there is a chance you're going to lose and I'd be broken if I lost, man. If, imagine everyone coming to watch. Your family's there. <laughs> you up. And then you get beat the fuck up. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm not recovered well, from that, man. I'm mentally scarred. But if you so, win... If you yeah, win, if yeah. you win, exactly. The yeah, feeling must top. be so in, in, intense, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'd consider it. I'd think about it. Depends Would on the you, circumstances. LB? Yeah, I'd, I'd do it as well. Yeah, I think yeah, it just depends on what it's for. Like if it was for the right, for the right reason. Like if it was a good charity match or something, and then like loads of people got involved, and yeah, then I'd definitely do it. But if it was just like a little, just random thing for no reason, then yeah, then I probably wouldn't. Yeah, I, I couldn't deal with. I wouldn't mind losing. But it just depends on how I look lost. Like like Jay said, I don't wanna I don't wanna get beaten up. <laughs> if I lose by like a couple of points here and there, then that's fair enough, like fair and square. But yeah, I don't wanna get like yeah, the shit kicked out of me and then That was a bad time to lose. As soon as someone gets knocked out in MMA now, the next day they turn into a meme. Have you seen all the videos that people make where they'd be like Yeah knocked mm. out and then all of a sudden they're driving a Mario Kart somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they make all this shit so random. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. It's nuts. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not so trying to right. I'm not trying to land like that. <laughs> They'd have you like you fallen, it, yeah? into a, fallen into a cactus or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I, I before I was so keen on it. But nowadays not really, I'm not gonna lie. The bag would have to be huge for me to do it. Yeah. I thought you'd be up for it because you train like that, don't you? You do kickboxing at least, but nah, because I know uh, it's there's there's no there is no oh I'm just gonna do it on the side. It's all or nothing. Yeah. It's training every day and nothing else matters. Yeah, or it would take up a lot of time. It. For for me as well, it's just it has to be your life. I d I just yeah. don't see how. I mean, you can. I'm sure there's some fighters who just dabble in it, do their thing, and come out, but. I'm a, I'm more obsessed. I'll be more obsessed about it. It'll take over everything. That's the mm. only way I can see myself doing well. I don't know if I want to do yeah. that. As I said though, if the bag is big, if they come to me with the huge, huge bag that I've been I've been hearing, then yeah. What if it I was like it. say we were just watching boxing one night? Because they, they do this in Thailand in some places as yeah. well. I remember being at this one party in Thailand. Um, and it was like a rave in a big, like, open area. And there was just, you'd walk around, go to all these different, like, stages and stuff. And then there'd be a boxing ring in one of them. And anyone could just go in. So it'd be like, mm. you'd get people who'd been drinking all day. And they're like, fuck it, I'll go in. And then oh you get God. knocked out. But I was <laughs> yeah, like, I was thinking, what if it was like, like a situation like that? Like, we're all somewhere. And then, because then no one's been preparing for it. So everyone's mm. in the same boat. And they're like, right, there's... 20 bags on the line um we're just gonna pair random people up who's down to enter so nobody's trained it's twenty thousand you could win and you just gotta get in the ring three rounds uh, i don't know maybe not i'll skip it 50 bags, <laughs> 50 bags is, <laughs> now, now we're we're talking a bit better <laughs> yeah yeah 50 bags in that situation if everyone's in the same boat and i know nobody's been training then i'd be more likely to do it but sometimes you go to these white collar events, like one of my boys entered and he said that some people are kind of sneaky, man. Some people just like to beat people up. So it's like, you know, they've been training a long time and they've done yeah. loads of fights before, but they enter these white collar boxing charity events, knowing that it's going to be people that aren't really skilled just so they can get one over. Yeah, just hmm. to beat someone Which I feel like that's just shady, man. That's a bit of a, a pussy move, really. If you know that you're almost fighting like a semi-pro boxer, but then you're just beating guys who would have the first ever boxing match. Yeah. That's the thing that would put me off because he said there was loads of people that were doing that. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah, if there's money on the One line, my friends did do the it, same thing as well. And he went up against someone who had so much experience. He was mm. pretty much an amateur fighter. 
Yeah. And my friend is no slouch. He's a really, really good boxer, but he, he he's not a boxer. He just does it for fun. He's always done it for fitness, but he's got really, really right. good technique. But he still got pieced up quite a bit by the guy. But And that guy stepped in on one day notice. Oh, really? So it's it's mm. not like he prepare, he could prepare for it either. Yeah. 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 I don't know, man. That sounds shady. I like boxing. I don't love boxing. I hear that. Enough I think to, everyone as well, like keen. especially those guys, we imagine ourselves as really good fighters all the time. We're like, yeah, I could get in a ring, could do that. But when you're actually in a ring, to keep that composure and to have the skill set as well, because people just think it's like throwing punches. It's like, yeah, I've yeah, had a few yeah, fights in school. I'll be, I'll be all right. But yeah. it's nothing like that, is it? It's like a, it is just a really good technique. Yeah, hundred percent. It's tough. It's it's more than just fighting a lot of the time. It's more just a battle with yourself and your mind. Yeah, mm-hmm. you get tired. You train but for six months, just but you step in the, the ring. Spot. You're gonna keep going. It's just yeah, it's a lot. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll see. We we spoke about it a few times, but if it came to it, yeah, I guess the circumstances would have to be right. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. If you asked me ten years ago, I would have been on it. Hundred mm. <laughs> percent. Yeah, I'm. I'm no spring chicken. So, <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. I'm just like aching on a daily for no reason. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> yeah, man. I can't lie. Yeah, recently my back has been mashed from producing. I do know I crouch sometimes like this, but yeah, damn, my back has been killing me. You're catching up to me, man. Yeah, it's mad. <laughs> It was like young, you don't late think 20s, about so definitely things. started feeling it. Yeah. God damn it. I'm getting old, boys. <laughs> yeah, man. I feel like we look after ourselves, though, as much yeah. as we can, in a way. One thing yeah. I would like to do more, though, is just more flexibility stuff. I've always done weight training, sometimes a bit of fitness, but one thing I've never really done is, like, mobility training. Yeah. I've done oh, some yeah. stretches here and there, but... You know, when you see some guys that are like, their whole thing is mobility yeah. and they just look like they could do the splits, touch the toes. Like they just look like mm. they're skipping through life, like no aches, no pains. Mm. Cause they're just so free, so flexible. I bet that's a good feeling to have. Yeah. yeah but it's just boring I, training to get there. I've got a friend who literally every time we stand still, he goes into stretch mode. He's just, he's stretching something. <laughs> he's waiting for something. Then it's t- then he just, you know, just. Touch toes, touch knees, stretch the arms yeah, or something. Like a habit. But to be fair, he's pushing like, I mean, he might be like 35, 36, but he's in mm. fantastic shape. No aches or pains. Yeah. So I think it's worth it, to be honest with you. Definitely. Yeah, that I mean, might be the next one. Like, a, a little bit of yoga or something. Yeah, just yeah. in the morning, just getting that routine. Yeah, that might have to be the next step. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely worth it. Just not as fun as lifting weights, I guess. That's why we never do it. <laughs> nah, exactly. Because the people that, that work out like that as well, they um, they might spend like an hour doing a whole like stretching routine and mobility training. Mm. I get so bored doing an hour. It's of so that. boring. I do like it's ten so minutes boring. of stretching, and then I'm like, mm. this is shit. Yeah, <laughs> literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Although when I, I was find younger... running quite boring. Yeah. I, I know that. some people love running and there seems to be a, a huge um, surge of population of running. Keep seeing running clubs pop up on TikTok and Instagram and run clubs and stuff. It seems to be growing in trend, but yeah, trying yeah, to get maybe. into it, it's just not my thing. A lot of, um, I feel like a lot of people when they start touching the 30s, that's when they start getting into running properly. The black people that me, like me that have spent ages at the gym and just never managed to get that hench. <laughs> so it's like, fuck it, I'm going to switch to running. And then also it's like, there's a, there's almost a meme where it's like, oh, you touch 30 and then all of a sudden you, you need to run a marathon. Have you noticed that? Like yeah. a lot of people when they get into the 30s, all of a sudden it's like their goal is a marathon. Yeah. Hmm. I, I do want to see what a runner's high is though. I want to experience that to see what all the hype is about. What was I don't the think furthest you've achieved it. Probably 5k. Is it? Mm. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I used to do this thing called Couch to 5K. It was an app and it trains mm. you to do 5K, but slowly. So like week one, you f- you run for two minutes, you walk for two minutes, you run for two minutes. 
But then yeah. by the end of six weeks, you should be able to just run a 5K flat in like 30 minutes, I think. Right. Mm. That's interesting. I've never tried anything like that. I've always just been like, right, let me just set off. Mm-hmm. Or like, I'll pick a map, like pick a, a route that I'm going on, whether it's like 3K, 4K, like depending on where it is, and then I'll just try and run it. But I've yeah. never been like, okay, let me just run 1K this day and then do 2K this day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's be, hard, uh, yeah, definitely be a better method to what I've been doing. Yeah, it's tricky. It I think like it's just definitely. depending on the distance as well. Like it's like if you run five k's all the time, and you're like you got a really good five k time, and then you stay like you go like oh I'll try a ten k, and you try and run it at your five k mm. pace. By the time you hit like four or five k, you're fucked. So you have to like literally just have to stop. I did it a couple <laughs> times, thinking I could just run the same pace, yeah. run it at the same pace. But yeah, just depending on the distance, you just really have to like, it's almost like a strategy. You have to really like pace yourself and yeah, just work within your own limits. And it depends on the route as well, doesn't it? Like if there's any hills. If you're just flat Mm. the whole time, it's all right. But when there's hills, man, they take it out of you. Yeah, wind as well, headwind. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Maybe I'll I'll give it another try. I need to, I really want to experience the runner's high, but. I don't know. Mm. Rather just hit pads or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is yeah, like... I guess you get it, high that way as well. Yeah, as I was going to say, you probably hit like a nice like peak level of, of like fatigue and then you just like, yeah, you hit that kind of high. Yeah. Did it, I, did, I had it when I was running. I think it's just a... It was, yeah, like ten, if, you're doing, if you're doing like 10Ks regularly, I had it during COVID. I think I probably hit it like once or twice mm. where like I was knackered. And then you just kind of push through it. And then that's when you hit that point where you just feel like you can just keep going and going and going. Um, yeah, it feels is, okay. Is that what runner's height is? I think so, yeah. Like you just you, you hit that point where like you're super fatigued. Apparently in the marathon, like they say, when you get to like mile 20, that's when the actual race starts because uh, most people hit that, mm. that prop, the, like the actual like runner's wall then. And then after that, it like that's when it gets really, really hard. But um yeah, when I was doing 10Ks and I was, like, pushing, then, like, you yeah, start to, like, really get tired at, like, 5, 6, 7K. And then all of a sudden, if you kind of just, like, get through that part, your, your brain just, your body just kind of goes numb and you can just, you just can just go. It's just kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, the furthest I've ever run is probably, like, a, a 10K. I've never tried to do anything more than that. Or maybe, like, a little bit more in, like, practicing. But like the but, only event I've done is a, a 10k event. A marathon right, but, is a hundred k, right? Nah, I think no. it's twenty something. It's, it's uh, twenty six miles. No wait, shit, I'm tripping. Twenty six miles. miles. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I don't know what that is in kilometers. So that's probably like what forty ish. Yeah, forty two k. Yeah, forty two. Okay, twenty six miles. So that is a long distance, man. <laughs> it's really long. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to d- judge that. North London and then if you start doing no, ultra marathons as well yeah iron man say that again yeah and then if you start doing ultra marathons and like iron mans and stuff like iron mans are crazy that's when you're biking swimming and running but yeah crazy distances and you're doing it like oh, over shit. days I just as well, checked up you? the distance yeah that's intense 20, 26 miles is even smaller than Enfield, which is the northeast borough of London, to Croydon, the southeast borough. <laughs> that's still only 21 miles. <laughs> that's mad. Yeah, wow. It's a fair old, fair old way. Um, you got to love it, I think. Low you just got to be into running. I don't know. I feel like I'd be on it. Just to try it. <laughs> just to see if I can. I think I can do a marathon. Why not? Do you know what I mean? Let's yeah. just try it. <laughs> Yeah, that 30 year old mentality is kicking in <laughs> yeah yeah oh, apparently it's that. really hard though easy. yeah easy, <laughs> mate. a couple of weeks training yeah, apparently it is really hard to like train for but it, it should you take have like to... about a year to prepare right yeah i think it, mm. i think you can do it in six months but like you have to do it in like you have to do really strategize it because you can't just mm. you, can, you can't just like run go straight in at a certain distance you have to like build it up but you have to build up at the at the right time um, because you can only apparently like you you can only if you're a proper trained athlete you've only got like three or four marathons in you like a decent you know for, at a decent pace in, really I mean, per, per year per year 
like because you have to oh, 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 okay. you have to like it's you like boxing yeah you yeah you have to peak and then you have to you need to take at least two two months to recover and then you can go again because it really does like has a, has a lot of impact on your knees and your and your ankles and your shins and stuff wow yeah it's kind of it's kind of tricky a lot apparently a lot of people there's Is like a something percentage. you wanted to cut the list oh sorry I was just asking if it is something you want to tick off the list. Honestly, absolutely not, because I think running is, <laughs> is not great. But I feel like that's why I should do it, because I've never enjoyed running. And just as a challenge, why not try and push yourself and just try something I that guess. you actually don't like and just go through it, see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that could be our goal for next year. Next year, not this year. <clears throat> Nah, we're already halfway through, man. This year's done. <laughs> we're running in December at this point. But we could trade for January if there's any in January. We like the start of 2025. That's the first thing we do. Yeah. Which one would you do? Would you do like the London Marathon? Or like, would you go abroad to do it? Or what would be the one you'd want to do? Not sure, because I think some like the London one, you can't just enter. I think you have to apply and not everyone gets in. Yeah, it's like they, they just they might just pick like random random people, for example. Um, yeah. I don't know. I can't lie. It's, it doesn't interest me that much because yeah. similar to you, Ocean, I, I just don't really like running. I was doing mm. a bit of it recently just to keep some sort of fitness level up. But I think if you had a marathon in mind, you'd have to be on it with running, wouldn't you? Mm. So I don't know. I'm not sure which one I do. It'd be cool to do one like on holiday though. I just didn't just to make a trip out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's one of those things in the back of your mind that could be cool to do. This mm. is a new challenge. Yeah, for sure. Re realistically, I don't know, man. We'll, see, we'll, we'll have to see on that one. Cause like, like, like we just said, yeah, it's kind of boring. Yeah. What others could we do? <laughs> What would be a different challenge that would be a bit more exciting rather than just running? Because maybe something like a, an Ironman, maybe not that intense, but you could do like half Ironman where Isn't there this you're biking, running Mad and Radar. cycling. Oh, Tough Mudder. Tough yeah. Mudder, yeah. That's that's I've done shout. that before. Yeah. How was yeah. that? It was, it was all right, you know. It was like, it wasn't as hard as I thought. It, it was hard, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of stopping as well because when you get to each obstacle there's a little bit you're waiting for like a couple people to do it first um so it's doable like i reckon we could go and do it now like i didn't train much for it at the time i still managed to get through it I was in a bit of pain at the end because <laughs> it like i can't it was either like my knee or my hip it's like something fucked up at the end but it was on the day it was like raining loads as well and you get to this one part where you've already gone through like quite a few of the obstacles and you get to this one part and they, they pass you like a big log and you have to like walk around with this like heavy log on you. But because it was raining, your feet were just like stuck in the ground. So like carrying this like weight and then getting your feet stuck in the mud, that was kind of tough. And then obviously in some parts you're um, going under like ice cold water. Like you go down this like slide and then you're just in this like muddy ice water. And you've got to go under this thing as well. So you're panicking because it's cold. And it's like, oh, can't get up, can't get up. Oh, man. <laughs> so, there's some funny moments, man. Um, and it, I can't lie, those things at the end that shock you as well, they fuck you up, man. Like, <laughs> you forget how powerful just a little shock like that is. You think it's just going to be a zap, but it literally mm -hmm. sends you to the floor. Like, you, you, you literally done the whole race. You've gone through everything. And then to get to the finishing line, you have to go through. It's, it's not that long. Maybe like 20 meters or something of this. It's just grass. I think it's just grass on the bottom or mud at the bottom. But then you have all these things dangling down that shock you. So if you touch any of them, it like gives you like a proper jolt. So you're trying to avoid them, but they're everywhere. So it's like impossible. So you, you, you think, all right, I'm just going to charge through. So you run. And all of a sudden your head's just in the fucking ground because this thing's just shot you to the floor. And then you're oh, trying shit. to crawl, and every now and again you get another shot because your head's back down. <laughs> That's crazy. It's that like you can't even that. you can't even fight it. You couldn't just get shocked and then be fine. Yeah. Like it's it's gonna do something to you. It's gonna send you to the floor. <laughs> mm. Yeah. 
Wow, man. That, that does sound fun though. Yeah, it yeah. Sound good. I, I do one of those again because that was fun. Like the obstacles are pretty fun to get around. Mm. Would you do like a yeah, Ninja you know, Warrior Rocks. type thing as well? They look quite yeah, fun. the Ninja Warrior one looks really fun. Yeah, that does look quite good. Ninja Warrior. Oh, is that like the... Oh, I know what you mean. Okay, in is that like Gladiators? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. I've done one in money that wasn't like... It wasn't like as a challenge or anything. You just pay to get in and then you can you can run around some of the stuff. Mm. And that was kind of fun. I liked that. Yeah. Have you guys seen High Rocks? This is... Um, oh, I want to say it that, kind yeah. of reminds me of CrossFit. Yeah. But it's it's like a competition of fitness challenges. Mm-hmm. And they have these big competitions around the world. Yeah. I think high a few rocks. gyms are running no, classes for that, that. Like, to train for high rocks. I'm just looking at it now. So, oh, so it's like CrossFit, like you said. Similar, yeah. I don't know if I've heard of it. But yeah, so I think anything like that where you're doing more of a activity rather than just running, I'd probably find it a bit more exciting. It's still a bit mm. hard though. Yeah. Yeah, the high rocks looks challenging. It looks like a lot, a lot of effort, a lot of things to do. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah maybe real. we should each set one. We'll pick one to aim towards, and then yeah. it's like a bit of friendly competitiveness. Yeah. Well, each like so we have three different ones to choose. What three? No, nah, no, nah, just to do. one. We'll we'll agree on one thing. What about cycling? Like, Are you guys into cycling? Nah, nah, not really. <laughs> I'd rather cycle legs, than run. Would ya? I feel like it'd be be somewhat easier to cycle from, let's say, London to Brighton than to run from London to Brighton. Yeah, maybe. I've never been into... Well, in fact, I used to, to love like biking around as a kid, but when I got older, I was never picking it as a type of exercise. Mm. Yeah. But it could be one. It there is, is probably more enjoyable at, um, than running. There is a cool thing. At, it's not like super taxing or anything, but if, if it was all like a bunch of producers going to do something, there's this thing at Centre Parks where you can do like... You arrange it yourself, but you can do like almost like a sports... Like, an Olymp- like you're an Olympics thing, because there's like squash courts there's like football pitches um like basketball courts there's like all these different like table tennis there's like everything there so you can arrange to like you know do like a bunch of different events and then like score it like a tournament I've seen a bunch of people like doing that at the minute i keep seeing it like, pop up on like instagram and tiktoks and stuff so that could be a cool shout mm. yeah mm. yeah definitely yeah and then what's that new sport that everyone's playing Paddle. Just keep on see- yeah, like where does that come from? Why is everyone yeah. talking about paddle now? That is so fun. Is I it good? It, yeah, yeah. It's like tennis, but you have walls around you, and you use the wall to play off as well. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So then, how do you score a point? Is is it just if it bounces twice? Yeah. Okay. Oh, so you can smack it off the wall. Kinda yeah, you, like can use the wall, you can use the wall to help you, like. Let's say someone hits it and they hit it really hard. You can use you yeah. can wait for the ball to hit the wall, then it can bounce and then you smash it back. Oh, that's yeah. pretty sick. And it, yeah, I, I think it's super fun. I've tried it. Mm. Yeah, Who introduced that? It just seems like maybe it's been going on for ages, but it's just got popularized now. But it it's just seems like everyone's talking about it. in Spain. Yeah, that's quite I think say. that's where it comes from. Yeah, it's super bit super popular. Right. I think in Miami yeah, I'm gonna as well. Have to try like, that. A bunch of NBA players are buying teams, and apparently it's like the next big, the next big thing like in sport, or not like huge. Thing yeah, it seems to be yeah. growing a lot. Yeah, yeah, that would be fun to do. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys like playing tennis, but love it, man. Had love super it. fun. Love tennis. You're into yeah. tennis, aren't you? LB? Yeah, yeah. I do like a bit of tennis. Started going because now because I'm mem- like it's like a membership thing, but you you literally pay like six pound a month, and they give you a key. And there's like um, a couple of tennis courts down the road from me. And now it's summer, like everyone's starting to go down again. So it's like good season for it. But it's just expensive, man. Like if you've got, yeah, if you, if you want to play all year round, you have to pay to be like a member at like an indoor place. And they're always like super expensive. You have to pay like a year's membership. And then then you have to pay to, to rent it, you know, to hire the court per hour. So it's like 
and just getting hit mm. constantly to to pay like you know not to play not even for that long so it's more of like a summer thing mm. yeah that makes sense you know that i think of it i haven't actually gotten into many sports apart from like i also played football went to the gym did a little bit of running but apart from that i never really got into anything else properly like never got into tennis played basketball a little bit as a kid but yeah yeah i want one of those guys that was playing like every sport you know like some guys will do football golf like just everything they can get their hands on basically whenever mm, yeah. something comes up yeah I kept it kind of simple yeah lb you're quite a sporty guy like you've played best sports right yeah, and not like tons, but yeah, like football, played quite a lot in school, and then played like, you know, like local league, and then basketball too, played uni with that, um, tennis, I'd probably, I'd probably say just those three, they're like the main ones that I spent like the most time doing in school and like, and still, you know, try and like mm. jump between now. Football, not as much nowadays, but I'd definitely play it if I, you know, if it was like a, a team I could join around here, but yeah. That's good yeah. fun still. <clears throat> yeah. What about you, Sean? You've been into anything else? Yeah, when I was younger, I used to play sports a lot. Football, I feel like everyone kind of plays football yeah. when they're young. Just the thing to do. Definitely. I played American football from about 14 to 18. Because they have teams in in, the, in London. They have... Um, it's quite popular. Yeah. But... By the time I was 18, I knew I was never going to keep co- continuing to play because the jump from like kids to adults is huge. They're all massive and I never really grew that big. Yeah. And no, that makes sense. Getting hit, man, it's tough. I'm not going to lie, but that <laughs> shit hurts. Yeah. Can that, you can get away with it when you're like 18. Even but then it was tough. Smashed like that I used now. to come home with concussions quite often. Did you? It was fun though. It was fun. I can't lie. Mm. And then I, I played, I mean, I did martial arts as a kid, <clears throat> played a bit of tennis in school, nothing crazy, bit of field hockey, but that was so boring to me. But <laughs> Field hockey was so hard. It's the one sport where you just, I just yeah. found it impossible to like keep the ball in front of me. Everyone just hitting your shins with a stick. Yeah, yeah man. It was brutal. It's so brutal. <laughs> Ice yeah. hockey is brutal. You ever watch those guys play? Yeah, man? Man, literally turn it, like, break out into fights on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's nuts how they do that. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. By the way, LB, how did you find um um thingy Theo Von the other day? Man, I think it was funny. Yeah, so fucking good. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. jokes on it. It was just it was just such stupid humor, but like only he could pull it off. Like just I don't know, such basic topics just yeah. talking about being gay and then like he was saying how like God is gay because like he makes you wee through your dick. He's like, that's a bit gay, isn't it? It's like everyone <laughs> it was so stupid. <laughs> but like it was just so funny, man. And it's just the pack. way he says stuff, isn't it? Like this Yeah. The thoughts that come to his mind. It's like, how are you even thinking like that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. It was so funny. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> Yeah, it was real funny, man. I was close to not going as well because the guy who I was supposed to go with, he was like putting it off for a while. In fact, the guy that I went with, he was putting it off for a while. So then I shouted someone else. Um, then he was up for it. Then he dropped out. And then I just bought the other guy a ticket and I was like, you got no option now, you're coming. <laughs> but it was literally the day before. Um, but he was glad that we went, man. It was it was funny. Yeah, it was really I was cracking good, up because we were unsure at first because I've seen his other stand-ups. I've seen his Netflix special, not all of them. Um, and it was funny, but I didn't think it was funny compared to his usual just like podcasts and stuff, yeah. you know, when you just listen to talks. I didn't know how it would go, but yeah. I think it, yeah, I think it was piss funny, man. I don't know if it's just because you're in the room and you're just in the mood to laugh and you, he's right there in front of you. But yeah. yeah, I was cracking up the whole way through. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's, it's a, I think it is a lot different in person just because like, yeah, everyone else is laughing and his timing. You can really get a yeah. better sense of like his timing for it. And like, it's quite impressive, isn't it? You know, when he just takes like huge, like really long breaks or like when he kind of finishes a joke and he's like, 
uh, what else have I been doing? What else have I been doing, man? Not much. Uh, but he's just so like chilled. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, Nine thousand people watching him. It's like so crazy. But it's a shame you didn't get there for. I the, wonder um, how much of it was scripted. Yeah, I, don't, I know what you mean. I think sometimes he goes off on a tangent, doesn't he? Like, I don't know if that's scripted or not. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I was gonna say it's a shame you missed it. the uh, the guy that opened for him, man. The guy that opened for him was just tearing into the front row. Like it was so funny. I can't even, I can't even oh, like, really? tell you how good it was. Yeah, he was so good, man. He was just, he was just relentless. I love that as well, because that's a special skill. Yeah. That crowd control and to be able to just fuck with everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was really good, man. Didn't you say you was, you was like sat next to Emotion when you went to LA, but you didn't even realize? Yeah. Um, what was it called? The Comedy Store. It's like quite a famous yeah. Oh, yeah. comedy place. And on any given night, anyone could be there. You might go, well, I think one night I went, Joe, go, Joe Rogan was there, Brendan Schaub, Brian Callen, just, just testing jokes. Mm. But one night I went, I was just chilling and yeah, if you're everyone, he was hosting it, introducing the next comic. And then he sat down next to me. And then he was nice. like, doesn't that guy look just like a teenage nu- mutant ninja turtle? <laughs> and I looked up and I swear the guy looked exactly like a, a teenage ninja mutant, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Oh, man, that's hilarious. And I was like, yeah, he does. That's hilarious. <laughs> he's like, he's a little dumb what, it was Theo that said that. Stage. Yeah. Theo, yeah. <laughs> he said that to you or just to yeah. the guy next to him? Just casually right next to me. Just like, yeah. <laughs> I can see him like, oh, that's Fucking so funny, up. man. You done that guy look like a teenage mutant <laughs> ninja turtle? He'll be like, <laughs> literally. Yeah. It was, it was smart, spot on. It? Spot on. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people say, like, I remember so Joe Rogan talking about him and he was saying, like, that's not like a stage persona. That's just how he is. Like, even in like when he's doing his big sets, yeah. like he did last night, um, the other night. Like, that's just how he is. So, yeah. Mm. I think you can tell, can't you? Because his stage yeah. presence is just like the same as when he's talking to people on podcasts, he's still got that same humor, that the same just like random comments that he comes out with. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'd love to spend some time with him just to chill. <laughs> just go for some food. Like he'd just be cracking you up. Yeah. Honestly. He's also quite a deep thinker as well. Like he's had a lot of guests on his podcast um, where they get into some like deep stuff and you think, right, he's actually got a, a lot of, depth to him as well because yeah. sometimes when you, you see people just cracking up all the time you think oh they must be stupid but he's actually a real smart guy he is yeah. a lot of depth to him yeah it's kind of like the perfect balance because he's got like that hillbilly sort of like no, yeah. tip like you know normally known for being a bit stupid but then like he is actually quite a deep thinker and yeah he's done quite well with it yeah so. yeah he surprises people mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> Yeah, no, it was a good night, man. We we ended up going to, we just went to a couple bars afterwards, and then got some food. Um, yeah, just had a couple of beers, and then my boy was like, "Should we uh, let's get some wine?" I was like, "Oh God, not wine!" I ended up getting a bottle of wine, and <laughs> yeah, shouldn't have had that. But no, it was good though. It was a good night. We were rough yesterday. Uh, not too bad. Just tired because we didn't get back till fairly late, and then was up quite kind of early to get back get back home and then just kind of got home yeah kind of tired but yeah still managed to get you know my normal stuff done like go gym and do a bit of work so yeah i can't complain yeah yeah it's good then yeah did you go straight back what you are working on at the moment yeah just straight straight back i was because i had barcelona last weekend i didn't want to I want to like just carry on the party <laughs> so i just needed to add stuff to do because i've got the bundle dropping as well so i didn't want to be rough yesterday yeah yeah that's fair yeah what's, what, what day's what, the what, bundle dropping <clears throat> so it drops on friday so the 21st mm-hmm. wait list on the 21st yeah so the wait list is open now and then it will launch on the 21st so the wait list people will get it a little bit earlier they'll get a private link a discount of a bonuses um but yeah next friday is the official launch so still got a couple bits i think everything's done i just need to like run through it and make sure everything's right like just test all the sounds one more time 
like bring like the phrases in to make sure everything's like tempo synced and stuff like that. So yeah. just yeah, I just need to do the final checks, maybe add a couple more sounds. Um, if there's anything I'm not fully feeling, but yeah, it's there. So nice. We'll see how it goes. Um, hopefully it does well. I have because I've still got my Facebook business account hacked. I still can't run ads and I can't use any third party services that needs you to connect to Facebook, like ManyChat, for example. So I can't oh. do the whole oh, comment this, comment the word waitlist and I'll DM you the link. I can't yeah. do anything like that this time. And that was like key for the last few launches. So mm. I'm like, man, it, you know, it's crazy. So I've been trying to get my account back for like, I swear it happened in February. Like, right, it's next I had my impossible. Instagram account hacked before and I got that back. But then for some reason, I got my Facebook business account hacked and I was able to change my password. So I don't think anyone can get access in there now. But what they did was they made themselves admin and mm. me a normal account. So there's two emails in there that I don't recognize and they're the admin. But because I'm not the admin, they're not taking my requests like properly. So... I can open a case and I'll speak to someone and tell them the situation, but they're like, yeah, we're, we're investigating. But they say they've been saying that for like four months. And then F- Facebook's customer service is terrible. They just bad, don't, like they don't listen. Yeah. Nah, I've sent, like, I sp- spoke to a few different people, but everyone's like, oh, you've already got a case open, so I'm going to close this case. And then I'll just get like a random email saying, yeah, we've looked into it and we need to keep investigating, so I'm going to close the case for now. So it's like they close the case but without anything changing. So um, one person asked me to like send my ID and like a sworn declaration, did all of that. Same thing, just didn't get anywhere. And then the crazy thing is, so the other day on Instagram, I had a, a notification from Meta saying that we've recognized your hard work here and we'd like to arrange a call. So I was like, oh, sick. So I actually got on a call with Meta and they were just saying, yeah, they've, they've recognized like the work I've been putting in. And they just wanted to give me like an opportunity to maybe ask some questions or get some advice from them. So they were giving me some tips over the phone. And then when it came to questions, I asked like a few like content questions. And then I told them about my account being hacked. But then she just said, oh, it's like beyond my scope. There's nothing I can really do. Oh, God. <laughs> Come on. Like you literally <laughs> work sake. for Meta. Your email address is at meta.com. There must be someone you can send an email to and just be like, oh, I just got off a call with this account. Like, he just look into it quick because he's got his account hacked but nah nothing no nah, man they're useless i've i've had that kind of problem where i got locked out of my my business account and i just had to in the end for a while i used my dad's account mm. i mean so i had to use his ad account and just let give him the permission to use like my instagram my facebook page to, to try and run some ads uh, but then okay. randomly out of the blue Two years later, they gave me my ad account back. Two years later? Is that yeah, how, so how long got, I'm looking I've got at? i it back now. <laughs> That's so crazy, open, man. Oh, so you use your dad's account and then you can connect Instagram my to your dad's Insta account? And, and, his, and the, Facebook, the Facebook page, yeah. Maybe that's what I need to do. Maybe not my dad, someone who, he opens um, fucking any link that's sent to him, but <laughs> if I could whoever, use Whoever would trust else's. you to use their Facebook. Yeah. Could you not set up a, a whole new Facebook account? I didn't try that. I'm guessing might, you could I might do, have to try I, that I, today. I don't know. Maybe they might say, oh, you've used this ID for another. Yeah. I feel yeah, like maybe. maybe I tried it, but I can't fully remember. But, but they might just say something like, oh, this address has been registered or you've, this ID has been used before. Yeah, you could yeah. be right. I'm going to try that tonight just in case. I should have yeah. tried it already, really. I've just been trying mm. to get this account back. It's like my whole Facebook like fan page got deleted. And they I was already charged like a few hundred because when they had the account, they set up some ads to sell trainers. And I don't even know if it was trainers they were selling. It was just they were advertising trainers, but the link might have been taking people somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And because my cards were linked to it, they put like the maximum uh, daily limit on. So instantly I got like a 300 pound fee coming out of my account. And then luckily I managed to get Meta to just like close the account, just like disable ads. So no one can run ads on there, but obviously it means I can't run them as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it just seems yeah. so crazy that you, you pay for 
blue tick you're supposed to get access to like meta support but it's like you feel like you're just talking to a robot when you speak to them literally it's like no one really listens it's like sometimes you just really need a human to be like yeah something's not right here like you've had this email since you opened the account you've sent me your id you've done all this yeah let me just look into it for you i think everyone there just must follow this like exact process of like this is the steps yeah and can't can't move from those steps and it's crazy that you can't just because it's i'm assuming like your name is on there it's crazy that they can't just take your id (laughs) yeah or and a pat maybe your id and a passport photo a picture of your passport and then that Mm -hmm. should be that should be enough like you'd have have thought as soon as you can confirm that you know a birth certificate or something you know (laughs) um if you could confirm that then yeah we should just let you have it back but it's crazy man yeah exactly it's like everything was so suspicious. One day, two random emails go on, make themselves admin, run ads on trainers, which I've never done. Yeah. It's like, come on, I've used this email since the start. This is my ID. This is me. This is everything. But I was just still saying they're investigating. Crazy, man. Crazy. Yeah. I'm kind of going through something similar with emails, though. Oh, really? For whatever reason, ever since I did the domain verification, it messed up everything and my emails just don't get delivered properly now. Oh, mm. from my email marketing? Yeah, man. Who are you using again? ConvertKit. And who are you sending emails? What email are you sending emails from? Is it at my... gmail.com or at a no, Ocean my, one? My, my website email. But... And you've done all the DNS settings, right? Literally. And it went from one day, 40% open rates to the next day, like five to 10. And it's just never recovered. That's crazy. I remember you telling me that that I was trying to think what it could be. But the only thing I could think of was that the DNS settings weren't set right. Or the list that you had wasn't clean. Like you didn't clean the list properly. Um, have you tried yeah. maybe setting up a new email, like a, a team at prodbyocean.com or whatever it is, and then using that email instead? That's the only thing I haven't done, but I've literally done everything else. They've given me a, a whole list of stuff to do, and I've tried maybe try that. everything except that. So maybe I'll try that afterwards. But I've yeah. also been talking to Clavio. I guess they, they want to compete for business, so... <laughs> Might yeah, that was the other thing I was going to say. You could always move platforms. But I'd, I'd definitely set up a separate email because it sounds like maybe that email could have been flagged for some reason. Mm. Maybe like too many emails went to spam because once you have these like welcome pages set up and you have just like so many people downloading stuff, you get a lot of like bot downloads, all the people that just get the free product, they never open an email. And then the yeah. list over time just becomes a bit dirty. So you're supposed to like clean them every now and again or like run them through. I forgot what the site's called, but Omnisend have one where you can run your list through it and it will kind of pick out all the, the emails that are like fake or like bot emails and then kind of clear those out for you. You just pay like a one-time fee and you might, you only have to do it like maybe every six months or even once a year. Um, but if you haven't done that ever and then you keep sending emails to like bot accounts and stuff, yeah. then maybe it's just flagged that email as a dodgy email. So just set up like a team one try that and then if that fails then it might be time to move over to like Clavio or Omnisend yeah man yeah yeah it's been that's that's been a, a nightmare I can't even lie to you yeah yeah emails can be long sometimes. yeah I remember you saying because it's like if you have the, all these automations set up as well mm. and then one thing's wrong or just that's this thing that kind of, kind of brings in money in the back end right if you've got your whole hook set up and the email chain so imagine that's stressful yeah. you, you literally just can't it's it's like you can't talk to any of to anyone because i yeah i i would just send emails just to update people to send them to videos things like that but mm-hmm. once once it just hits spam just off the bat it's kind of pointless yeah and yeah. these email tools are not cheap <laughs> yeah do you get an account manager with your email platform, who do you say you use again? Is it Aweber or ConvertKit? ConvertKit. So I was using I'm I'm using ConvertKit, but I signed up for Clavio again. Mm. So I'm speaking with Clavio to see what's to see to basically see if I can improve what 
what is happening on ConvertKit. Mm. Have what they said? They haven't said much yet. I've got a, a meeting with them coming up. Right. I imagine that you should be able to fix that somehow. Because it shouldn't drop that much. It's been a, it's been a while as well, so hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just try that other step first. Just set up that other email, and then just switch it. Because then it might just it might kind of refresh itself. Mm. Yeah. Saves all having to migrate everything across. Yeah. Yeah. Boys, I'm gonna have to run anyway. I've got to be somewhere in an hour. Yeah. Okay, man. No cool. problem. Yeah, might have to shoot as well. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, right good then. catching up, man. And thanks yeah, again for listening, everyone. We'll see you in the next one. Yeah, appreciate you guys. Peace.